Okay. Maybe that, that'll be better. And hopefully they can hear us online. If you're um, on the Zoom meeting, then uh, we will be um, taking your questions towards the end. And Christina Stefan will be assisting with us, assisting us with that today. So <clears throat> I just wanted to say that definitely the cone of silence is in effect. What that means is any communication directly or indirectly to seek to encourage any specific result in connection with an authority selection process, including, but not limited to, written communications, any and all forms of like electronic communications or messaging, including social media, oral communications, either in person or by telephone, initiated by a proposer or through a lobbyist, agent, or third person to any authority employee and or committee board member, who is a member of any committee constituted for the purposes of ranking submissions, making recommendations, or making an award is prohibited from the, the time that the procurement was released to the time the award is made. However, the authority's procurement manager or its designee may initiate communication with a proposer in order to obtain information or clarification needed to develop a proper and accurate evaluation related to this procurement. Again, that is Shannon Bush. She's our procurement manager and she's out today. Um, and I think the next thing that I need to do is um, hand it on over to Jim Drapp, our, our GEC, and he's gonna give the pre presentation for us. Thanks, John. There's a lot of information that I'll be going over today on the project. If you have some questions here in the audience, uh, if you wanna ask them when we get to that slide. And then as Amy said, anybody on the Zoom meeting, we'll get to those questions at the end. So let's get started. Well, there we go. Uh, just a few introductions. You met Amy. Greg Slater is our executive director for Thea. Uh, Judith Villegas, sitting back here, is our will be the Thea project manager. Uh, Brian Pickard is our director of engineering and operations. Uh, also, uh, Bob Fry, a director of planning. Andy Lelewski is our director of tow operations. Sue Charzan is our Director of Public Affairs and Communication, and I'm Jim Drapp with the GEC. As I said, the project roles, Judith will be the project manager for Thea, uh, will be the general consultant supporting Thea, uh, and as Amy said, within the cone of silence, uh, several of our subconsultants who have been involved in the RFP development, uh, Tierra, for geotechnical work element for survey and utilities and a CEI team, which will be determined at a later date. Oh, and I just see, I didn't see you hiding back there. Andy Lelewski, our tolls director is in the back for those of you that don't know Andy. Here's the agenda we'll be going over today. Uh, we're gonna talk about the project, ATCs, uh, get into the uh, LOIs and the written proposal. Um, the uh, consultant and contractor work types required, about the Q&A session, the evaluation, our schedule, uh, mention some items about the upcoming uh, CEI services, our SBE participation, the stipend for the design build teams, then uh, who the evaluation committee members are and technical advisors, and then about the project documents that are available and finally, quest, any other questions at the end. The project limits. This is a design build project. It will extend from west of Himes Avenue to east of Florida Avenue with ramp and local roadway improvements, uh, including new signals, two new signals at Euclid, uh, a new signal at the eastbound Bay to Bay on ramp, uh, new signals on the north side of the Selman at the Willow exit and entrance ramps. And then Plant Avenue, we will be adding an additional lane to the westbound exit ramp where uh, the traffic exits to access Tampa General Hospital. We'll talk about the project goals, 
temporary traffic control plan requirements and work hours allowed, other project information and the project schedule, including uh, several incentives and disincentives that we have built into the project. Project limits, as we talked about. Uh, let's talk about project goals. Uh, there are several things that are very important to the authority and that were outlined in the uh, PD&E documents. Among those, uh, we're looking to reduce congestion and do operational and safety improvements on the facility uh, with the goal of implementing Vision Zero philosophy. Uh, we're going to provide walls for noise mitigation along both sides of the roadway between Himes Avenue and the Hillsborough River. Uh, we're going to continue implementing uh, the LED lighting that we started on the South Selman Safety Design Build Project, moving the lights from the outside to the median. So we'll continue implementing that with this project. We're going to implement multiple ITS and connected vehicle technologies, including uh, adding fiber and closed circuit TV coverage for the entire system from the start of the project to downtown Tampa. We want to minimize the number of different traffic control plan phases, minimizing diversion and detours to make uh, travel simpler for our customers during the construction operations. There'll be a lot of coordination needed uh, between uh, adjacent uh, projects that may be underway. Uh, very importantly, with CSX Transportation, we have the railroad line running on the west side of the Selman for the majority of the project. So that's going to come into play. Also, uh, you know, other agencies, the city of Tampa, especially if you're going to use detours utilizing some city roads. Hillsborough County, because Bay to Bay is a county road. Uh, so you're going to have to uh, coordinate with a lot of other agencies that will be involved. One of the requirements is to maintain all the existing tolling points with no disruptions or impacts to our customers related to tolling. And this project, we're uh, going to provide you with a 3D survey model that we've done of the entire project limits. And as part of the project deliverables will be design files, CAD files, and 3D. And the as-builts will be need to be submitted at the end of the project in 3D. There were several project commitments that were identified in the PD&E documents. Uh, on the cultural resource side, uh, the Fort Brook site in downtown Tampa, there is uh, some requirements there during uh, for uh, excavation work. Uh, and if any prehistoric or historic artifacts are encountered. On the natural resources side, we've got several items, uh, as you can see there, uh, including manatee conditions, uh, Marine Wildlife Watch, and uh, coordinating with various agencies during, doing, during foundation work, pile driving within the Hillsborough River. Um, also, that's a navigable waterway, so you'll have to deal with the Coast Guard probably also. Talked about the noise walls earlier. Also, there are multiple medium and high contamination sites identified in the PD&E documents along the project. So those will need to be uh, considered uh, during design and construction. And one of the requirements we have added is that a temporary eight foot fence with a fabric cover will need to be installed along the right of way line on the east side of the project from the start of the project to the Hillsborough River prior to start of construction to provide um, visual and uh, dust abatement to the adjacent uh, homeowners and property owners on the east side of the project. 
temporary traffic control, uh, similar to previous projects we've had in that area. No lane closures will be allowed Monday through Friday work days from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And one of the things that the authority is very um, strong about is no lane, lane closures if there's no work being performed. If you put a lane closure in, there needs to be work being done. If you're not working, we don't want to see lanes closed and our customers impacted. You'll be providing public involvement support. I'll talk about this more later. Uh, the PIO will be provided by the authority. Uh, the design build team will be responsible for obtaining all railroad permits, coordinating with CSX for flaggers and any other items, but Thea will pay those uh, reimbursable costs to CSX for the flaggers and other items. But the design build team will be responsible for coordinating and getting those in place, obtaining the permits and getting the flaggers needed on the project. One of the things we're really interested in looking for is to implement design and construction ideas to minimize impacts to the community adjacent to the project, such as emissions, you know, noise abatement, safety features, employment of local workers. So that is a high consideration for the authority. Again, maintain those toll operations and minimize noise impacts to the adjacent properties that are nearby. The typical section for this project, we're gonna be widening approximately nine feet to the outside on both sides of the project. Um, the top two typical sections are the work we're doing on this project. Uh, our initial plans were not to widen the bridges on the inside. That will be in the lower two typical sections are the future improvements when additional lane capacity is needed. Uh, when traffic uh, justifies that 10 to 15 years out. Um, but as you can see, we're going to widen to the outside. All the work will be within the right away. There's no right away acquisition. This will provide six lanes. You can see the noise walls, that eight foot concrete barrier noise wall that will be constructed on both sides. However, there are several bridges that I'll note that I'll uh, indicate as we go through the project limits that will need to be widened on the inside, uh, mainly for uh, the traffic control plans because there are several bridges that we have to replace the decks. We're not just widening to the outside. So I'll hit those later. But one of the key things is that all this work must be compatible. The design must be compatible in the construction with the future ultimate eight lane section that is identified in the pd e documents. Now I'm gonna go through the project geographically from east to west, starting from south of Himes to south of Bay to Bay. Uh, several of the things to talk about in this area. Um, the Himes, the westbound bridge there in the center, that uh, bridge is one of them that needs to be redecked. So because of that, we will be widening uh, both those bridges in the median, providing the median barrier wall, and that will be used uh, for maintaining traffic during construction. Also, those bridges are steel, so we're going to need to recoat those bridges, both eastbound and westbound. Looking at the bottom photo on the left-hand side, you see the Euclid bridge. We're going to need to do uh, medium widening there also because of transitioning traffic at the south end of the project. Um, and additionally, you see that next bridge at El Prado in the center of the bottom photo. Uh, that bridge will also have median widening. And the westbound exit ramp over El Prado there, that deck will need to be replaced. Uh, looking a little more in detail at Euclid, 
as you can see on uh, at Euclid there, we will have the new signals at both the exit and entrance ramp, uh, new traffic signals, new pedestrian signals. There'll be sidewalk improvements along Euclid um, on the south side primarily, so uh, and some crosswalks across Euclid. So uh, there's a lot of work at Euclid Avenue on the local street there at the end of the ramps. Next area we'll talk about is from south of Bay to Bay to Mississippi Avenue. Um, in the center, uh, Bay to Bay. Uh, that location, both the westbound bridge and the westbound exit ramp, the decks will need to be replaced. Uh, so with that, there'll be, the, again, the median widening to uh, facilitate the maintenance of traffic. And several of the, the beams in there are steel. Those are going to need to be recoded. Then at the bottom uh, photo to the right, uh, Mississippi Avenue. Um, both the bridge overpasses there, those decks will also need to be replaced. So that again, we'll have the median widening will be done there. Um, little closer look at Bay to Bay. One of the additional items is on the south uh, ramp at Bay to Bay, we'll be adding a signal for that on ramp. Now we'll look from uh, Mississippi Avenue to west of Willow. Several things uh, to talk about here with the bridges. Uh, first bridge there around station 215 on the upper photo to the left, you'll see that uh, the, uh, the eastbound bridge there is steel, so it will need to be recoded. Um, Morrison Avenue, uh, we'll just be doing the widening there. Nothing in the median at that bridge. Similarly at Swan on the south photo on the left hand, south uh, aerial on the left hand side. And then uh, the east uh, end there on the bottom at Platt, we will be actually removing and replacing the westbound bridge because of some geometric changes needed with the curve there. So as in conjunction with that, we'll we also be doing the median widening of both bridges there at uh, Platt. I'll get into that, the interchange at Willow here in a second. Then our last uh, section, we'll be going from west of Willow Avenue to east of the Hillsborough River to the end of the project. Uh, several items to note here at Willow, because as I mentioned, there's some geometric changes with the, the curve there, the horizontal curve. We will be uh, doing the median widening for the bridge over Willow. Um, the next bridge there in the center, uh, South Boulevard, will just be the standard widening to the outside, no median work. Uh, similarly, uh, on the right side of the upper area at uh, Hyde Park Avenue, uh, we'll just be the widening to the outside. Uh, one thing I'll note there between South Boulevard and Hyde Park, um, you can see there's two uh, uh, potential pond sites there uh, on the south side of the road. In between those is our old uh, mainline toll building. Uh, we are looking at reconstructing new toll gantries in that location for both the eastbound and the westbound main line. And I'll talk about those later under our tolling section. Then getting into the, the bottom uh, aerial, on the left side, we have the bridge continuing from Hyde Park over Plant. Again, just the outside widening. And then we get into the Hillsborough River bridge and the viaduct through downtown Tampa. Uh, several things to talk about there. 
the bridge over the Hillsborough River. We'll, we will be looking at the design build team. You'll only be doing the deck widening on the outside on both the eastbound and westbound viaduct. But from the west end of that bridge over the Hillsborough River to Ashley Drive there on the east side of the river, you will be designing and constructing the entire foundation, substructure, and superstructure to include the, the pier caps for the ultimate eight lane section. You're not gonna be putting the beams on, beam seats, or the, the deck in the median, but you will be constructing everything else because the city is doing uh, their West Riverwalk project on the west side, and we've got the uh, Riverwalk on the east side of the river. We only wanna be in here once on this project and impacting stuff down at the ground level and above. So when we come back for that future project, all we'll have to do is uh, place the beams and do the deck widening in the median of that viaduct. So there's a lot of additional work in that area. Another item uh, to talk about on that bridge is there will be vessel impact collision requirements on that bridge. And the design that you come up with, we only want that to be attached to the new foundations and piers. No connections to the existing piers or foundations for the vessel impact improvements. And then finally, looking at the bottom, we'll talk about a little more in detail is uh, the Tampa Street westbound on-ramp there at station 560. That ramp, well, that bridge will need to be removed and replaced because of geometric changes. And then at the east end, you can see you will tie in to the existing off-ramps uh, there to Florida Avenue and down to Morgan. And you will tie into the existing on-ramp coming up from Vereen. Uh, so you can see there that we will drop the uh, third lane heading eastbound with the two, two, two lane, two lane split there at the off-ramp. Let's talk a little more about a couple of those interchanges because there's some major things happening at the east end. At uh, Willow, as you can see, we're doing upgrading the off-ramp westbound from a single lane to two lanes. We're reconfiguring it where it's coming into the intersection there at Willow, uh, similar to what we have uh, to the east at Plant. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of improvements there at the ground level at that intersection. There'll be new signals, new pedestrian crossings, um, new uh, uh, sidewalks around that area to facili facilitate uh, pedestrian activity. Additionally, uh, uh, we will be we will be doing uh, replacement of the um, uh, gantries uh, at the tolling locations, both on the westbound on ramp and the eastbound on ramp, which also is being uh, will will need to be a two lane gantry there because of the widening and the two lane exit ramp there at the eastbound off ramp. So a lot of work happening there. There should be no changes to the signals uh, down there at the end of the off ramp, but, uh, but entirely new signals there. Uh, that I'm talking about on the eastbound side, but on the westbound, entirely new signals there at Cleveland and Willow. The plant, Avenue interchange, as I mentioned, that ramp is also being widened to two lanes on the westbound exit ramp. Uh, so uh, a lot of improvements to that ramp. 
but it will tie in uh, to the widened ramp uh, before you get to the intersection. So there should not be any, uh, any work at the plant and uh, Broreen intersection, Cleveland, whichever it is at that point. Uh, the on-ramp on the eastbound direction, we will be putting in again, a new toll gantry, single lane gantry there. And then finally at uh, Tampa Street at that on-ramp there on the uh, north side of the Selman, as I mentioned, we'll have to rebuild that ramp because of geometric changes with the uh, improvements, capacity improvements. Uh, and then you can see how we tie into the existing at the east end of the project where we're trying to minimize as much work um, onto the ramps as that there will be work on a future project on those ramps. Let's talk a little bit about the structures and the bridges. So I mentioned a lot of things. There's 27 bridge widenings. There's six re bridge redeckings, westbound Himes, westbound El Prado off-ramp, westbound Bay to Bay bridge and off-ramp, and then the east and westbound bridges at Mississippi. Two bridge removals, westbound over Platt Street on that horizontal curve mentioned, and then the westbound Tampa Street on-ramp. And then we replace those with two new bridges. We got five bridges that are steel beams that would need to be recoded, east and westbound Himes, east and westbound McDill, Bay to Bay intersection there, and then eastbound Howard over Watrous. Nine of the bridges will require independent peer reviews because of the complexity of them. Himes, McDill, Bay to Bay, Howard Watrous, eastbound, and then the east and westbound viaduct bridges over the Hillsborough River extending into downtown Tampa. So a lot of activity with those bridges and then also the eight foot concrete barrier noise wall the entire limits of from north side of the Himes Bridge to the Hillsborough River on both the east and the west side of the Salmon. ITS and lighting. As I mentioned, there'll be a lot of things with ITS, including two new 72 pair fiber trunk lines and separate conduits on each side of the project, both on the outside, on the north side and the outside, on the south side, located primarily within the concrete barrier noise wall. We're gonna include wrong way detection at the, um, and gate are at all the off ramps. Um, that'll be advanced warning, similar to the DOT standards but we'll also be adding in pavement lights, as you may notice at the slip ramp eastbound at 34th Street to get from the local lanes to the REL. We had a test project where we installed those flashing lights. I believe there's six red lights across the pavement, three different locations. And we'll be putting that in at all of the uh, ramp locations. Uh, we're doing, uh, we have a similar project that will take care of all of the ramps on the east side of the Selman. So we're looking at putting that on all of our ramps for wrong way driver protection and detection. Uh, so we'll have the capabilities to, to uh, transmit that information to the traffic management center, be it here or at District 7. Um, we're going to also be adding, uh, as I mentioned, cameras the entire way. We'll, on the, to cover the entire project, we'll be adding additional DMS signs. We have a conceptual, uh, a master ITS plan that is included in the procurement documents. Uh, and all of these devices will need to be connected, as I mentioned, with the TMC here 
and Thea's building. We're gonna complete the, the uh, median LED lighting that we started on the uh, South Selman Safety Project. One of the main things I wanna point out is it's being moved to the median, the lighting on the median barrier wall. And so the existing lighting was left on, on some of the bridges on the outside uh, from that previous project. However, this project will be widening every bridge to the outside. So those existing lights will need to be replaced with lights in the median. From that project, it was designed the spacing so it'll they'll fit right in with the, the lights are on each side of those bridges. However, there are still several bridges, as I mentioned, that we aren't widening to the inside. So on those locations, you will need to design and construct uh, temporary light poles and attach them in the median to those existing bridge structures. Uh, you know, structural engineers should have be able to handle that, but just to point that out, don't overlook that, that you're gonna have to do that on those few bridges that we aren't widening on the median side. The drainage on the project. As you're probably well aware, most of those pipes have been out there 50 to 60 years from when the original uh, expressway was constructed back in the late 60s, early 70s. So the contractor is required to assume that all the pipes will need to be lined as part of the final design and the contractor will be required to video inspect all those pipes that are gonna be, continue to be utilized and to recommend alternatives to pipelining if it's necessary from the results of that video inspection. We'll need to make sure that video inspection also includes GPS data for all the locations. So if there are, is additional work beyond lining, that will be, added to the contract negotiated between Thea and the selected design build team. So you will have to include in your bid, lining all the pipes and any additional uh, construction required, that will be an add on later during the project. One of the things that Thea has already always required on our facility is that for the runoff, roadway runoff, that all spread uh, will need to be the calculations to show that is maintained in the shoulder. We do not allow spread into the travel lane because this is a higher speed facility. Also a major item at uh, on the south side of Swan, on the west side of the Selman, there is the South Albany Pond. That pond has a um, pump station that is non-functional right now. That, that is used to pump water from that pond into the, the ditch adjacent to the CSX right away between that and Selman for it to outfall into the Swan Avenue Pond north of Swan on the east side of the Selman. So as part of this project, you will need to design and construct a replacement pump station. Uh, there's a building there, we've got all the existing plans, so it needs to be similar to what is there now, just functioning. Additionally, the city has a planned project for an outfall, new outfall down Howard Avenue. So we will also are requiring you to, uh, to stub out a connection uh, there from that pipe system uh, that, and plug it that we could, the city can connect, connect to in the future when they do their project along Howard to provide additional outfall capacity for uh, the city in that area and this helmet. So there are details of that in the procurement documents. Utilities. We have made contact with all the utilities in the area. The design build firm will be responsible for the 
additional coordination and design efforts. We do not anticipate a lot of utility impacts with the, uh, you know, the utilities are primarily crossing under the Selman at the overpasses. All our bridge widenings, the piers are in alignment with the existing piers. Uh, you will need to uh, uh, make sure and do a lot of utility investigation at the intersection improvements like at Euclid and Willow with the new signals and Bay to Bay for utilities in those areas for signal poles. But uh, so that should be the primary, but we'll pr we're providing to you all the contact information and the design build team will be responsible uh, for all the other uh, efforts moving forward. Tolling. This contract will include providing the uh, tolling site infrastructure, uh, including installing the gantry, generators, uh, and other uh, equipment at those locations. As I mentioned, there'll be five, uh, there'll be new, low, new gantries, a five lane gantry on the westbound main line, four lanes on the eastbound, that additional lane west town is because of the new two lane exit ramp at Willow. There'll be two new two lane gantries, the eastbound Willow off ramp and the westbound plant off ramp. And then two new single lane gantries replacing the existing there at Willow and plant. Uh, so you will need to construct these facilities, have everything in place and then <clears throat> turn over those sites to Thea's tolling integrator to install the tolling equipment and do the required testing. There are some specific time limits. You know, I believe they need 90 days to work on that, to do that testing and installation. So those are all outlined in the contract documents, including uh, Thea's general tolling requirements. So make sure you look at that closely and include those timeframes for those activities within your schedule. And again, you've got to maintain the existing tolling uh, so there's no impacts to our revenue collection during construction. Aesthetics and public spaces. One of the main goals for Thea is for the design build teams to continue the aesthetic themes uh, started on the Salmon West Extension project through the west of our the rest of our system, you know, including colors, design components. You know, the big thing on the Salmon West Extension is the finbacks and that look. Well, how can you incorporate it on the this project? We're not saying to build finbacks on the bridges, obviously, but there's other aesthetic elements you may be include to include, and we'll be looking for those ideas and concepts in your proposals. We also will be doing some public space improvements under the Bay to Bay and McDill bridges. We don't have those finalized right now, but you will get those. The shortlisted teams will get those before we get into the ATC, uh, the two rounds ATCs. So we're looking to get those to you around the first of the year or earlier. Uh, those could include uh, dog parks, similar to what we have here on the Cotfila Dog Park here by the uh, Thea headquarters. Could be other recreational activities such as pickleball, bocce ball, uh, there'll be parking. So all these things will be required um, and we'll get you those final design requirements uh, prior to you getting into the ATC submittals. Additionally, we're looking for improvements at the Euclid Avenue and Willow Avenue uh, at the bridge underpasses similar to like what we've done. You can look at Swan, you can look at 
uh, Morrison. Uh, we'll be asking you to give us renderings of those areas and uh, propose colors and textures of structural and hardscape elements uh, as part of your proposal, then the authority will select the one they like for you to implement. So you'll need to include the cost for either one of the options that you propose within your bid. Some of the technical items, we've got a lot of design variations and exceptions that have been identified through the pd &E and the concept plans. Um, they're identified there. We'll look for you to prepare those to submit to Thea for approval uh, during the design process. One other item I'm going to point out from the technical side here is coordination with CSX and the signals. At every uh, bridge overpass on the west side of it, there's railroad signals or the railroad crossing. And with the bridge widenings, it will impact most of those signals on the east side of the railroad track. So you're gonna have signals replacements, uh, you know, Himes, Euclid, El Prado, you know, Bay to Bay, all of those, all the way up to Willow. So uh, don't overlook that. And also we will say with the median widenings at Bay to Bay and McDill and the widening on the outside, there will be significant uh, reconstruction or relocation of railroad signals in that area because one of them, Hallen uh, McDill, happens to be in the median of the bridges above, and that won't be able to happen when that bridge is filled in. So there's a lot of railroad signal work to be cognizant of. Public involvement. As I mentioned, Thea will have uh, a public involvement officer on board uh, as a Thea representative. Uh, they will take care of a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. They'll, we'll look for the design build team to coordinate with that PIO, you know, maybe providing renderings or graphics or a person to attend, attend meetings with the public. We'll want the design build team to proactively report any interaction to, with the public to that P, PIO person for them to handle. You know, we'll have that information and their cards, give it to you to provide to your workers who are out there, your supervisors. If they get somebody from the public, come up and contact you to direct them to that PIO to handle it. So you don't have to provide that. We're going to provide it, but we're going to look for you to support with any uh, support the PIO needs uh, in performing their duty. Project schedule. We have an estimated project duration of 1,800 days. Now I'm going to get into the incentive disincentives that we talked about. Because of the projects that I mentioned with the city of Tampa, with the West Riverwalk project, and potential future Thea projects, we want you to get in there and build that east end from the uh, west end of the bridge over the Hillsborough River to the east end of the project. Everything you see there in that uh, aerial photo, including all, including all that work on the Hillsborough River Bridge I talked about, um, you will get a $2 million no excuse bonus if we achieve partial acceptance by day 800 on that portion of the project. And then if you don't make the 800, you still have a $1,700 per day incentive disincentive up to day 900. So you'd gain 
you know, if you got done in 801 days, you wouldn't get the 2 million, but you'd get 1 million, six, 630,000 or whatever, $1,700 a day less, 1 million, 698,300. But if you don't get done by day 900, then that incentive will start kicking in of $1,700 a day up to a maximum of 1.7 million disincentives. Everybody clear on that? And then the second um, incentive, disincentive, is the eastbound, the improvements along the outside to primarily getting the completion of the eight foot barrier noise wall in its entirely entirety on the east side of the project. Is it $20,000 per day incentive for every day it is completed prior to day 975. So if you can get it done in 725 days, complete all that work, there's a maximum incentive of $5 million. We want to, because of the close proximity of the residences and businesses on that east side of the project, we've made a commitment to the public to try to get those walls built as soon as possible. You don't have to have the pavement done or the other things. You just need to have that wall built structurally sound along the entire east side of the project. Innovative aspects and alternative technical concepts. We have to, we'll have two rounds of ATCs uh, following the standard process the FDOT does that you're familiar with. There's several items that we will not consider ATCs, as you can see there, reduction in project limits, lanes, lanes widths, permanent design speeds, uh, storage links, any significant changes in alignments that will jeopardize the future capacity improvements, as I mentioned, going to the eight lane in the future, elimination of any, any tolling point locations or tolling sites. We will not allow to leave any existing overhead sign span assemblies. They're all 50 plus years old, we want them replaced. And we will not allow you to eliminate the wrong way driving features that we are proposing. That's pretty much the technical items for the design and construction. Now let's get into the procurement process, expanded letters of interest. Uh, Phase one of the procurement process. The ELOI will be a maximum of five pages, eight and a half, 11, font size 10 minimum. Um, there are several additional items we're requesting in the procurement documents that aren't counted in that five page limit. Uh, there's some pass fail criteria you see. You can provide a 11 by 17 organizational chart, uh, resumes of the 12 key personnel that are identified in the RFP, preferably only one page resumes. Uh, you will submit the ELLI via email in Adobe PDF format, 10 meg maximum size limit. You can see the uh, evaluation criteria there. Uh, maximum of 50 points, the different uh, items that we will look at, past performance history, so similar design build project experience, your proposed staffing and organization, 
and then your discussion about the project requirements, design and construction criteria and critical issues you'll be addressing, including aesthetics and community involvement. The scoring will be used only for shortlisting. It does not carry forward to final selection. The authority will shortlist three firms to move into phase two. Three firms. Then we get into phase two with the technical proposal. Uh, again, PDF format. Uh, we know this is going to be bigger. There's going to be a lot of stuff in there. Um, but you'll need to provide it to us electronically. Uh, the, the proposal itself, 10 pages. Uh, you'll need to include in there a scheduled narrative uh, for the design and construction, showing critical path with no work at risk in that proposed schedule. You, you're all aware of the different items that are allowed by the specifications for work at risk, but that cannot be in your original proposed schedule. You'll need to include plans. They can either be in the format of 11 by 17 sheets or 36 by 40 inch roll plots. Maximum horizontal scale one inch equals 50 feet. You're gonna need besides the normal plans that you'll show, you know, roadway draining structures, utilities, signing the marking, signals, lighting. We'll also want to see conceptual plans addressing the wrong way driving and ITS uh, controls requirements identified in the procurement documents. And as I mentioned with um, continuing the uh, aesthetic uh, concepts and styles from the Selman West Extension, and our existing underpasses will look for renderings of two different concepts and colors for retaining walls, noise walls, bridges, et cetera, landscape, hardscape at the Euclid and Willow interchange areas. And you'll also need to include your TSPs with your technical proposal. There's the scoring. Uh, in points for the your technical proposal, design aesthetics and construction are 30 points each, temporary traffic control 15, a major item, then your coordination 10 points, and then three items, five points each, utilization of sustainable recyclable and environmental friendly materials, value added, and your SBE participation, a maximum score of 100 points, and your adjusted score will be your bid price proposal divided by the technical score. So, uh, and the selected proposer will be the responsive and responsible proposer with the adjusted score that is the lowest. similar to what you've seen on other projects and DOTs, similarly. Contractor pre-qualifications. Contractor needs to be pre-qualified in the major types of work listed there. And the other minor types can be accommodated by either the prime or subcontractors. Similarly, the uh, design consultant on your team will need to be pre-qualified, either the, your main or one of their sub-consultants in all those uh, pre-qualification areas. As part of the uh, phase two procurement process, we will have a question and answer session for each of the three teams shortlisted, 120 minutes each. Uh, you'll be able to do a short intro, we'll go over all all the final details of this with our, our pre-proposal meeting with the three shortlisted firms, but no other handouts, electronic presentations, et cetera, are allowed other than copies of the submitted written technical proposal. No questions are allowed by the design build team. 
The authority will provide some of the questions, but not necessarily all to each design build team five days prior to the question and answer session. Here's our procurement schedule for the phase one. We'll go into the second schedule more in detail uh, with the three shortlisted firms, but the advertisement went out on the 26th of August. Our pre-submittal conference today, the 29th of this month will be the deadline to submit questions, requests for quote, clarification by 5 p.m. on the 29th. Uh, if there's any addendum release required due to those questions, we will uh, uh, provide that by 5 p.m. on October 3rd. And then the expanded letter of interests are due to Thea by 11.15 on October 10th. The evaluation committee will provide their scoring on the 25th to procurement. And then on the 27th, we will have the meeting at 9 a.m. Uh, to confirm that scoring, a public meeting. And we'll post that in the intended shortlist the next day by five o'clock. And the board meeting on Monday, November 14th at 1.30, the board will confirm that shortlisting and it will be posted on the 16th to move forward to phase two. Um, phase two, just to, the only thing I'll say is we will start the ATC meetings shortly after the first of the year. So you'll have plenty of time there. Uh, just to let you know, it's uh, early in January, but we, we need to get that to meet our schedule. That's it with everything, uh, details for the design build procurement. Talk a little bit about CEI. I know there are a lot of you here interested in that. The CEI will need to utilize uh, the 3D design requirements because they'll be providing their design in 3D. So you'll need to have the capabilities to uh, perform your duties. So keep that in mind. Uh, with 3D design. We're gonna do a similar process for procuring the CEI, the initial five page expanded letter of interest and shortlisting. And then we will have oral interviews with the three shortlisted firms. And depending on when that process uh, is finished and then we get the CEI firm on board, they may uh, support Thea in the design build uh, reviewing the ATCs and or the technical proposals. Uh, it'll be a similar schedule uh, as the design uh, procurement with that two-phase process. We anticipate getting that advertisement for the CEI out later this month. As always, it's Thea's goal to meet or exceed 15% SBE participation on our projects. He is proud they've always exceeded that uh, on a yearly basis. So, uh, you know, uh, it's part of the scoring criteria for the design build. So please look to meet or exceed that 15% requirement. And as you're sure you're well aware, Thea recognizes DOT, City, county, port authority, aviation authority. If you're a MBE, SBE, DBE, WMBE, you qualify as an SBE for Thea. Design build stipend. The non selected shortlisted design build firms will be uh, provided a $500,000 stipend each. Uh, to receive that stipend, you'll need to ex fully execute uh, uh, within one week of the shortlist proposal period uh, four copies, originals of that design build stipend agreement, similar to what's been done in the past. The evaluation committee media, uh, members and the technical advisors 
for the design build selection. The evaluation committee will be Judith Villegas, the project manager, Brian Pickard, our engineering and operations director, Bob Fry, the planning director, and Andy Lelewski, the tolls director. For the CEI, the evaluation committee will be Judith, Brian, and Anna Quinones, one of our planning PMs. Technical advisors to support that group uh, will be Sue Charzan, uh, the communications director, and then member myself and various other members of the GEC team uh, for us and our consultants. And as I mentioned, uh, the CEI, who is to be determined, may support us also. So again, don't forget the cone of silence is in place. All contact shall be through the procurement department. Shannon Bush will be the primary person there. That includes CIA, HNTB, Tierra, Element staff, the board. Um, there's your email address for any questions to the procurement department and all answers for any questions will be posted on the Thea website and Demandstar. So if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them now that we can, or we'll provide an answer on the website. Um, following today's meeting, all questions need to be emailed to the procurement office. Any questions here in the audience, John? Uh, yes, probably tomorrow. Tomorrow. Any other questions here in the audience? Any questions online? There's one to end on here and then online. Oh, yeah, go ahead. We will look for the design build team to let us know what they need to build their project. Uh, it's anticipated that they will need to be vacated. Our contracts with agreements with the city and other entities are a 30 day notice. So that will be something early in, in the project that you'll need to let us know when you anticipate the design build team will need access to all those areas and we'll consider those on a case-by-case -case basis. You said you had something? No, I was wrong. Last chance. Thank you very much for attending. Amy, anything else you want? I think everybody's probably already gotten their flash drive from over there and signed in and given their IDs. If you haven't, please stop by and do that. But I think they, they got you all. So other than that, thank you for attending and have a great day.